This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. Hello, football fans, and welcome to the Onside Kick. My name is Ricky Widmer, and I'm not here with Mark Weber. Usually, usually I would say, hey, I'm here with Mark Weber, but I'm not. I've got a new crew here. I'm here with Sean Anderson. Dub them ease. And making your onside kick return, Dave, you got Dave Long Oster awaited. Here. You're returning a, a the two, onside kick? A two-year return. He's been on an onside kick in two years. Well, it was a joke because like, you're returning you're the onside kick. You're returning the onside, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get oh, that one. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I get it now. I did one right See, over my head. See, the comedy has been up now. It, it it's went, Mark's comedy. Oh, it, it went right over my head. Yeah, I say, like new cast nothing. Kick. I'm old. <laughs> much like Brandon Bostic. My, much oh, my like God, Brandon, Brandon Bostic. Bostic. But we're here doing a kind of special pseudo onside kick because I'm happy again. I'm no longer depressed from Tuesday's Are you day. really, though? Are you just are you telling yourself this so you don't cry on the inside? No, I was like, if you listened to the Teddy Bridgewater segment, you could oh, tell in my voice that I was destroyed. I walked out of the studio and I saw Ricky walk coming in, and Ricky was just like, "I need a hug." I this was video, I, I assumed needed like a hug. wrist slit like that day. If like, I could have, if I could have at my desk, I probably would. Oh, like man. I was sitting there at my work desk, like. Sunken, this man lives Vikings, Sean. Don't give me that look. Like, he well, lives for the you Vikings. Know what? It, I mean, Brady went down, and I wasn't that. I mean, like, I... You I, were a lot younger. Yeah, when, when I found out Brady went down, the first thing I did was go to the bathroom, yeah. but I was pretty unconscious <laughs> at that point. So. You had just woke I, up. I, like, literally woke up, Ricky comes in, he's like, yo, Brady's done for this. He's just like, hang on one sec. Come back, he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> I was watching that, and then I just remember just crying a lot. I didn't, I, but I wasn't. It took time to process. I, yeah, I cried a lot. I was, I was at a young state. If, if Brady went down now, I would, I would be pissed no, off. No, but, but it was with me. The way I described it was, I wasn't depressed. I was sports depressed. And now I'm not sports depressed anymore because yeah, my team not a true fan. went out. You and, got the golden boy. Well, I mean, my team went out. If you haven't heard, Sam Bradford now a Minnesota Viking. They send a first overall pick and right now a fourth over to the Eagles. However, if the Vikings make the NFC Championship Which game, they won't. that fourth becomes a third. I don't know. I had them pegged in the NFC Championship game with Teddy Two Gloves. You also had the Colts and in then, your Super Bowl last year. Two Gloves, no knees. And needs. then if they win the Super Bowl, that fourth becomes a second round pick. I, I don't I don't know what you guys think. I don't think this is that move. Like, it's a great move for the Eagles. They get their first round pick back. Yeah. For, for the Vikings... I don't get why everyone's so like, oh, this is a bad move, shouldn't have done it. Well, okay, this is this is what I'm saying, because we argued about this in, in our group chat with everyone from MVP, and, and the thing is, is the, the Eagles won this no matter what. Sam Bradford goes out and wins the Super Bowl with the Eagles, doesn't matter, you win. Doesn't matter well, you at all. you got your first round pick back. And you, got, you, you traded a quarterback that, not, didn't, that did not want to be in Philadelphia, that has mm-hmm. a ton of injuries, you're able to start your young quarterback, or you're able to rely on Chase Daniels, and, and, right, and you're not... Well, you're right not now that, the report is Wentz will start week one if health. Yeah, but the thing is, is you don't have to. You don't have that high expectations now, and the Eagles win this no matter what because you're getting a first round draft pick, and mm-hmm. you know a, a top thirty two pick is a great pick no matter what. And you know you lost that w- with trading for Carson Wentz this year. So I think the thing is, is that the Eagles won this no matter what, and the way the Vikings win this is if he stays healthy. If if Sam Bradford Bradford can stay healthy, and that's a lot to ask from Sam Bradford. Yeah, but. I mean, with me, I look at He hasn't it, played a full season since 2012. But the way I kind of see it is you couldn't go into— the, you couldn't have a lost season. You could not go into this season and have it be a washed season, a 7-9, and nine, not make the playoffs, and get a medium pick. You couldn't have that. And why not, Ricky? I mean, this is a team that has just been mediocre for the last mm-hmm. decade, pretty mm-hmm. much. And it's a shame because they have the best running back, well, the best questionable running back in the league still, in Adrian Peterson. Top three running back, without a doubt. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. That, that's easy enough. And then they've been building up this defense. I mean, they they were priming themselves for a deep run. And I just felt like Teddy was still the, I mean, between him and his wide receivers, there's a weak, weak link on this mm-hmm. team was that offense moving the ball. And I'll be honest, Teddy wasn't that impressive at quarterback. 
Sam Bradford comes in town is already like eh, about the same, maybe a slight upgrade almost. Well, and, but that's a, like if he stays healthy. If he stays healthy, that's a lot to ask from Sam Bradford. And I get like, and I get that the thing. And I get that he was played, drafted in 2010 and was, played two full seasons. Sean, this is the thing that in you mentioned in our group text messages with everyone from MVP. This is why I just wanted to ring your fucking. And neck. I get that it's one of the things <laughs> you where, bought a Ferrari where the wheels keep coming off. I understand. I don't know you if think I call it's a Ferrari, Ferrari either. Well, <laughs> okay, you bought it. Well, you're acting like it's a Ferrari. All right, fine. You, Can we you, call him like a you, Dodge Charger? Yeah, you bought a yeah. Dodge Charger and the wheels kept falling off. And, and you know, Teddy Bridgewater was that real, you know, that that Toyota who, you know, his, his engine might start a couple times for you. You know, he, he's he's not that, that that great of a guy. He's not going to be, you know, that guy that you just bought and he, he's starting up right away. But he, he's a guy who can be consistent for you. Sam Bradford, it's either you're getting a Dodge Charger or the wheels are falling off yeah, and his well, ACL's torn. It's one of those things where, yes, I understand staying healthy is... It's important, but it's important for everybody. The example I use is what just fucking happened Tuesday. Okay. Injuries can happen to anybody. Yes, I know the risks some are, are higher. Yes, yeah, so some people are more predisposed more. to injuries than as someone who has been injured multiple times in their career. But not only professionally, is, but in college as well. I think that there are some serious concerns about Sam even, Bradford. But if you're the Vikings, you had to make this move. You but, had but you to, have to go for Sam Bradford? Best available. Okay, what is he really? Who would you Who would you think is better? Real quick, real quick. Last year didn't play a full season because of a shoulder injury that started back in college. So he he's already dealing with a shoulder injury here, and we don't know how long how many hits he can take because you know Teddy Bridgewater has been hit a ton of times. He's been hit over thirty six times in both of his seasons. He didn't even play a full season in the first year. So with you know Sam Bradford, you don't know how that shoulder is going to take up taking damage because that's how he was hurt last year was going down to the ground. And then also you got to talk about this knee. Hurt his ACL twice, missed hold of all of 2014 because of an ACL injury. You're dealing with that with Ted Bridgewater, who just tore his ACL. He did he, much, could, much in a nastier but way. You but you couldn't enter this season with Sean Hill as I your agree. quarterback. But with Sam Bradford, you're talking about you're putting in this position because of injuries. You're bringing in a guy in Sam Bradford who cannot stay healthy. I mean, it's not it's not like a thing where, oh, you know, you got to worry about injuries with everyone. This is a thing where you have to worry about injuries. And this is the thing. It's not Sam Bradford's a great quarterback. Sam Bradford can be a great quarterback if he's on the field. And that's but a is lot this to also ask for something like and this is the thing I mentioned in our group text. This is the best team could be the best team that Bradford's ever been on. Yeah. <sighs> I mean, that I mean Eagles, this is team is better than that I, Eagles okay. team, which was way better than that Rams team. I don't know. His last year on the Rams, his last year on the Rams, when he only played seven games in 2013, he was 14 and four touchdowns and interceptions. He was having a great year, and he had some guys who, you know, I think his presence there made them better. So honestly, I, it's it's going to be very good. He's got a much better running back this year. The defense is a on about the same that he level. Played with R- in college. Okay, yeah. okay, that was eight Which years is, ago. Yeah, what is that? That, that does nothing year. for you. There's no, no. That for, there's a little bit of familiarity no. of nope. just having None. been on the same team None. together. One year, eight years. One, one for they played together for one year, eight years ago. It's it's not that big of a deal. But the, the thing that you did bring up was that it's the best team that he's played on in Philadelphia. Went seven seven for seven. Uh, his best two years in St. Louis were his first year seven and nine, and then his second year we went seven but I'm eight just and saying, one. Like I don't personnel disagree. and. I don't the disagree. Expectations. I don't disagree. This yeah. is the best team that the that Sam Bradford has been on. That doesn't mean that can they can keep him healthy because of that. Just because he ha- might have a better offensive line, which I don't really think so, because Teddy Bridgewater has been hit in the past, you know, two seasons more than Sam Bradford has ever been hit. I this just season. think, like in my mind, I think of why worry about something that hasn't happened yet because, because it, it can happen. Well, no, no, no. It could. Ha- and I'm talking about the injury, like you <laughs> saying, oh, he could get injured this year. Well, he hasn't gotten injured this year, okay. so let's not worry about it until it happened. Because if we no, worry about would you it, if we sit there and worry about it, Dave, then we're going to be sitting there going, "Well, are we going to win the Super Bowl? Are we not going to win the Super Bowl?" Well, you're I not. I can just save you the trouble. I can save you the trouble. Four days ago, but I was very, very depressed. See, I want to go back there. The, the thing, the thing with Sam. Well, if you don't want to go back there, then why are you so high on the Sam Bradford thing? I, the, 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 the reason it sounds I'm like you're trying to sell yourself on Sam Bradford being the solution. I'm selling myself. It's. Would I rather have Teddy Bridgewater? Yes. Is Sam Bradford like the golden boy that's going to lead us to the Super Bowl? Not him alone. But I am now back to a place this where it's like the Trent no, Dilfer argument, no, where like is, if anybody can do it. No, no, no. This is my <laughs> argument of Tuesday when we did our revised NFL playoff predictions. I said, fine. You know what? Throw my three NFC North team playoff thing out the window because the Vikings are making the playoffs. 
this is me saying, yeah, he's got to stay healthy, but with a healthy Sam Bradford, we can make the playoffs again. And in the playoffs, anything can happen. Again, Ricky, I'm not disagreeing with you. <laughs> Sam Bradford is a good quarterback. No, I know. When healthy. And <laughs> I, he's a slightly above average. And I just don't, I, I wouldn't like, even say good. I get the whole, right. I I'm get the whole, it's like, fair. I if, if you listen everybody. back to 2014, yeah. I, I'm a little... Sunshine, I got a hint lollipops, and rainbows, I believe, was the exact For quote. his torn ACL. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little bit of salt. It, it was a good move, I believe, you also yeah. said. Yeah. Again, when healthy, he usually throws more touchdowns and interceptions. That's a good sound of the quarterback. Uh, but Teddy Bridgewater w- didn't even have that much of a difference. Again, when healthy is a lot to ask from Sam Bradford, and that's all mm-hmm. I'm saying. I the, just the, think the reason harping to, like, I get why you're harping on it, but it's like, you know what? Yeah, it's a concern, but let's it's, let's worry about it if it happens. It's like the joke. It's jo- a huge if. It's like the joke with the Dallas Cowboys and St. Louis Rams. They're gonna go eight and eight. If it, you, you might, they might shock you. You know, Dallas might make the playoffs and go eleven and five. St. Louis might shock you, and go nine and seven. But you know, if you're taking the bet, if you're saying, you know, this this team's gonna go eight and eight or mm-hmm. seven and nine or nine and seven, I would take that bet because that's what the Cowboys and St. Louis Rams have done for a history. The history shows Sam Bradford has an injury problem. The thing I'm kind of not confused with, because I understand why some people may be like, whoa, why did we give up a first? However, I'm sitting here as a Vikings fan. I'm looking at it from the good side. If we make the playoffs. If you make the playoffs and Sam Bradford is your quarterback. Yeah, if we make the playoffs, Sam Bradford stays healthy. A, I would say we win, like, for us ourselves, it's a win for us. And it's a draft pick where it's like, okay, I'm not super mad at losing it. Plus, I mean, we don't know. This has, like... This all needs to play out. It hasn't played out yet. We don't know if we get to draft day and the Vikings package something together to try to trade back in for, let's say, a 30-second pick like they did when we drafted Teddy. We could still have a chance to do something like that. Like, There's a lot of pieces that still need to happen. Yeah, we gave up a first-round pick, but we needed to because we couldn't let this season go by as a wasted season. It's a bad trade if you don't make the playoffs. And that's that's the only way, you, you can't really argue that. If you if you trade this first round draft pick that can either help you get a running back for the future because you know AP's not getting any younger. We know the 30, 30 year mark for running backs. I'm are. not gonna I'm not gonna say it wouldn't be a bad trade, but it would be one of those bad trades where I'm sitting there going, "Why well, can't be mad at us for pulling that See, trigger?" If if Sam Bradford stays healthy and you go nine and seven and you just miss the playoffs. Then it's different. Not, that's, it's I, no, I, w- I would say that's not a bad trade because you you made the chance and you took a bold chance and that's something you want to see in your franchise. But what if he gets injured and you don't make the playoffs? Then, then we a, all point and go told you so. And yeah, you go, well, exactly. it's all we could do. Well, exactly. And I, I'm, then I'm not mad either way. But the big thing here is, is well, like you said, is, it's timing wise. And with Adrian Pearson coming to theoretically the mm-hmm. end, the back half of his career, I mean, he's over thirty. He hit that magical line of sand where running backs no longer become productive. You know, we'd like. I'd like to think that he will drop off a little bit. Probably. Uh, I mean, it's just it's impossible for this man to lose. But still, he's gonna drop off. And then going forward, you need to answer the question of, all right. So if our best offensive weapon is getting worse, and he's gonna end up retiring in the next couple of years, and Teddy Bridgewater, I almost call him Teddy Two Gloves again. Um, just do it. Just or Brid- yeah. or Teddy Bridge over troubled waters. Well, that, that bridge has a troll right now. <laughs> uh, but look, right. And and the other thing is, if he comes back, when he comes back, how good is he going to be? Because everybody's now talking about how horrible this injury was and how after one year you're going to be like, best case scenario, you're 85% of the person you were. Look, Teddy wasn't a standout player to begin with, so I don't know how much an 85% but, of an average quarterback in this, this league way. will be. And I know, off two years Sean, off. you don't even have to fucking say it because I'm going to say it already. If you can stay healthy. Which there, is a I, I, I said it. I said it. We got that. We don't have to say it again. Yep. But if you look at the contract from Bradford, if he can stay healthy, we got him then for two years. He's not a free agent until 2018. So Teddy can come back in his 9 to 12, start to re- rehab the injury, and then take an entire another season to rehab. And we have an, a quality answer, hopefully, who can then, okay, we'll let you walk off and Teddy can come back. Let's say Roger Goodell goes in the settings and turns off injuries for this year. And Sam Bradford goes in and we, we expect he, he performs like he usually does. Mm-hmm. This defense is the lives up to expectations. Adrian Peterson doesn't hit that 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 line. Mm-hmm. They make the playoffs. 
And then you have Sam Bradford injuries turned off again next season. He's your starter. You make Teddy sit out. Then you know he gets you to the playoffs well, no, again. Teddy would sit out because it's a yeah. It's okay. about nine to twelve months my, just to get back to rehab. My point is, you're going to wait two years for Teddy Bridgewater, mm-hmm. and the, Sam Bradford just took you to the playoffs two years in a row. You wouldn't go back to the guy who just got you back to the playoffs for two and years in a row, well, and the guy who just been sitting out on the sidelines for two years. That's a decision that we're going to have to make. Then, well, what I'm they, just what saying, would you make in that de- decision. I'm just saying it gives us a quality quarterback that if we did want to go back to Teddy, we could. See, I think it was a lot of value for a big risk. It's 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 high risk, high reward, and that's and that's the mm-hmm. thing. If you make the playoffs, you 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 won the trade. You you won a part of the trade. You got two winners in that trade because the Eagles are winning this no matter what. You get a first yep. round pick for a guy who didn't even want to be in your city. The thing though is, if you make the playoffs as the Vikings, you win this trade. If you don't. You lose this trade. If you if Sam Bradford gets injured, you lose both because you're not going to make the playoffs. Sean Hill's your starting quarterback, and Sam Bradford got injured, so you don't have that you know re- reassurance or that uh, that kind of a you know uh, contingency. Yeah, that contingency for next year because Sam Bradford is going to be coming off an injury. Teddy Bridgewater is be coming off an injury. You're still going to have Sean Hill as your backup. You're going to need to look you have no future plans. for something, and you won't have a first round draft pick to get a quarterback who might be able to start. Yeah, but we do we have to get the that's the thing with Sam Bradford's contract. Yes. With him being a free agent, not until 2018. Let's say he is healthy. Let's say Teddy's not the answer then. He doesn't come back. He's not a quarterback. Do we have to draft that quarterback in 2017 where we gave away that pick? Or could we do it that 2018 season? Well, you could, but then again, then you're, it could you're, you're, you're going to oh, go back can... two years ago where Teddy Brid- you just brought in Teddy Bridgewater. You're going to be a team that's not going to be that prevalent of a team in the NFC. And you're going to be looking at a team with, you know, Sam Bradford's gone, Teddy Bridgewater's gone. You're going to have or a rookie we, quarterback starting or what if we without, Adrian, without Peterson. Adrian Peterson or, a, you know, Adrian Peterson and the Diminished, he's playing yeah. at. Yeah. And I mean, with the diminished AP, I get the third, like the, the age of 30 and running backs. I can't say like he oh, might he'll pull it Dirk. He could. Well, rules are out the age. window for Adrian Peterson. Mm-hmm. I mean, the man came back from, from snapping the ACL, the ACL yeah. and was which, one of the greatest seasons. Which I'm kind of there's in the back of my mind. I'm thinking maybe it's something in the water. He in could Minnesota. just pull. He could just pull a Barry though and be like, you know, mm-hmm. what? I'm sick of this shit. Like Megatron just retired. Nobody saw that coming. He could do the same. Yeah, thing. Yeah, but Megatron. Like, like if you listen to his interview that he had, um, with I think it was E60. That was something totally like. Where they start getting into the pain medication side of it, and, and you don't think Adrian Pearson takes a beating? Yeah, all NFL. I mean, players he gives it back to beating. his son, but still, <laughs> we're not gonna we're not gonna make <laughs> Sorry, any of those shot, jokes. Alan. But the one thing, the one thing I do want to hit is the one thing, and this is all coming from that text message group that we had with the six of us. It got into a conversation of who else could the Vikings have gotten and to me, it's Sam Bradford is the best option. Yeah, you could have gotten Michael Vick, but I don't like he doesn't really fit you, the Vic, system Vic, no, to me. On, real quick, Vic, Vic is done. No, Vic, quit it, bringing up. I would. <laughs> he tried out. That's the only oh, reason why I he, brought him up. He tried out, but I can try out for the Vikings quarterback spot. I'm not going to get it either. I don't think you could. Me before you. You guys got I, a but, starting quarterback in the, the NFL. But the two. <laughs> that's what you got. But the two that I do think of, one that just got cut. Who just signed with Mar- the Cowboys? Was Mark Sanchez? Who just signed with the Cowboys? Colin Kaepernick. And the thing is, great for the Cowboys. They can get somebody who sucks. That's great yep. for them. But Mark Sanchez, to me, I don't want a guy who couldn't. He couldn't win a job that was handed okay. to him. He lost to Trevor Simeon. What if Trevor job- Simeon's better than you think no, no, he is? No, 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 no. I'm not. Whatever. If he's what if Trevor better, Simeon shits on Teddy Bridgewater? No, no, I'm just saying because I think I'm he has every Dave, opportunity to do that Dave, in his rookie year. Dave. I'm not comparing him to Teddy Bridgewater. I'm saying Mark Sanchez was basically how it went was, was here's the starting job. Oh, wait. No, you lost it. Here's the guy. Like, he was the guy who was supposed – it was like – To be fair, Sanchez did everything you expected him to do in that preseason. Like – I, what I saw out there was Mark Sanchez. I, did, I wasn't surprised by his It was like if an election was rigged and the person that it was rigged for still lost. But that's what it was like. Maybe and it's just them expecting too much out of him because he played exactly what you thought he would have. One thing we can we can bring in is that 
Mark Sanchez and Sam Bradford played with the same exact team last year. Same exact team, same exact personnel. You know, Bradford went down, Sanchez had to step in. If you look at their numbers and how different they were, you know, Sam Bradford obviously played more games. Sam Bradford, 65% completion pass, and completion, completion percentage. And the big thing you said you want is Sam Bradford to be, you know, uh, very, very accurate. Well, that's the, the thing North with Turner offense. You got to be accurate. The thing with Sanchez, Sanchez, sixty-four point eight. I mean, very, very close there. You know, if you look at Bradford and Bradford and but Sanchez's numbers, four touchdowns to four interceptions for Sanchez, nineteen to fourteen for Sam Bradford. I think that. But here's the thing about Sanchez: he's got to be. He's the kind of quarterback that needs to be managed. He like he. he well, you, you got can't, Adrian Peterson, you so it's can't easy let, to do that. No, I, but I'm saying I don't want a guy where it's like there's that little bit of percent of are we going to see a catastrophic play here? Well, okay. I don't get yeah, that well, feeling with Sam Bradford. Yeah, not one. Yeah, it's, or I'm sorry, it's, it's, a, it's a when. Yeah, it's when. Well, okay, yeah, I agree. We, we know the butt fumble. But the no, thing, no, I mean <laughs> interceptions. Like, it's predictable. Well, it, interceptions, too. But if you're making, it, it, with, it, with, in 2014, 14 for 11, he, he kind of, he hasn't corrected his interception mistakes. He hasn't corrected no. his mm-hmm. play, playmaking ability. But then again, I mean, Teddy Bridgewater wasn't the most, you know. I'd say 14-11. Well, let's see. Teddy last year, 14-12. See, you know, you don't need Mark Sanchez to come in here and, and throw the ball down the field. You just need him you to need hand the ball off. manager. And the thing, with, no, just... the thing with Mark Sanchez, he has playoff experience. Sam Bradford doesn't have that at all. Mark Sanchez has that. Mark Sanchez has been to two AFC championships. As much as we don't like it, as much as I don't how like it he, as a Patriots fan. How did he fan. get there? Was it a solid run game and a good defense? Sounds about right. I would take, but that is, that's the it's one thing option. I mentioned to, you don't have to give up a first well, for that. You, you can no, no, get no, no, a future no. plan for that. That's what I mentioned when me and Mark were texting. Mark's like, oh, you could have went with San, uh, Mark Sanchez. If Mark Sanchez was still the Mark Sanchez from 2010, 2011 when that happened, fine, I'll take him. Or 20, 2009, You do realize that he, he was tw- tw- oh, hang on, 12 touchdowns and 20 picks that year. In 2009. Yeah. I would take the no, that he one is, is like Mark he has Sanchez. Learned a lot and he's grown. Mark Sanchez is not the guy I good want. Team. I okay. don't want Mark Sanchez but, anymore. But the thing is, is no, no, I don't think anyone wants Mark Sanchez as a starting quarterback. But the thing is, is he's I'm better gonna, than Sean Hill and he's cheaper than Sam Bradford. And with Mark Sanchez, how many times have you said, oh, this guy can't stay healthy? You can't, you don't have to say that with Mark Sanchez. You, you, you can't. You might be able to say he can't stay on the field, but because he keeps throwing picks, or because he keeps throwing picks. But but the thing is, he can at least stay on the field consistently. And last year, he didn't have a terrible season. Was he great? No, but you didn't need him to be great. He's consistent. He's consistent. And yeah. and one thing with the, the I Trevor's- just I just think with Mark Sanchez, it's it would be a a lot from the coaching staff to you've got to really set him up for this is what you got to do. This is what you got to do. This is what you got to do. With Sam Bradford, you don't have to. How much? I kind of want to say baby him, but I kind of don't want to say baby. But him. also, you have to baby him because you're like, all right, Sam. If if you feel if you've been staying in that pocket for more than four seconds, throw it away because you throw it somewhere. The you, second, get, you can't get hit. Don't run. But the Whatever second you do, don't run. The second quarterback we brought up. Got to work on sliding for years. Was I think it was you <laughs> that brought can't. it up, Sean? In our group text was Colin Kaepernick. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, Kaepernick. The thing is, r- r- one quick, real quick, quick about Sanchez with Simeon. You want you want a passing offense because you have so many weapons in Denver for a passing offense. So if Simeon's a better th- thrower and making better decisions, yeah, go with Simeon. Yep. But with Sanchez, you don't need to make those big passes. You you rely on your run game. With Kaepernick, though, you know, if you look at him. If we're worrying about sacks and we're worrying about you know Sam Bradford being under pressure, Sam Bradford doesn't have the same mobility as Colin Kaepernick. Colin well, Kaepernick. Ka- well, the thing with Kaepernick is it does not like his play on the field does not factor into why the Vikings right. would have passed on him. Well, yeah, but I mean, outside of that, I mean, you know, if, if you're, you you mentioned something that no NFL team wants him, well, the, the, the 49ers kept him on Saturday, and he's still making a lot of money here. And he may end up as their starter at the end of all this. Yeah, and I, th- I think with Colin Kaepernick is, if you look at him, he's going to be a cheaper option than Sam Bradford, because, I mean, you could still say they have Blaine Gabbert, and they're kind of iffy, so if they're like, hey, we'll give you a third-round pick and a fifth-round pick or something like that, then you'll be able to get Colin Kaepernick, and Ka- Kaepernick can at least be very accurate with his passes, because even last year, where he was where he's pretty bad. He had 59% completion percentage. Uh, the year before, he had 60%. The year be- in 2012, he had 62%. But what you and get he's is got a dynamic player. That's what uh, I was bringing uh, up. Absolutely. He's athletic, out, out, of, out of this world athleticism, and he gives you more opportunities to win than lose. But he the, will extend plays. He will. Com- the, the problem with him is he hasn't had a supporting cast around him and I, I kind of know what you said all, about like that's all great and fine but it, like with Kaepernick it has nothing like it, we could talk X's and O's with Kaepernick till we're blue in the face mm-hmm. it 
that doesn't right, factor into why. Wants, well, yeah. It was NFL Live. I can't remember the player that they said, but what the kind of conversation was that most of the execs in the NFL, he is now the most hated among most execs. And there was one comment that was made. Yet again, I can't remember the player, but they're like, oh, he's more hated than this player. And someone goes, isn't that the one that killed his wife? Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. Well, th- yeah. well that also. You're more hated than well, a no. Greg Hardy had a out. job last year. So, I mean, obviously, you know, He's NFL executives don't have the greatest morals I was going to say, execs don't have morals. It's the one guy who is outspoken amongst the media. That's the only answer. Mm-hmm. Because he speaks in the media, you are a hated person by an exec because an exec, the perfect person, is someone who doesn't talk, who just does their job, and is completely silent well, and outside I mean, look off at the football field. That That's bring, all they want. That brings me into, you sent me a video, and this is... Kind of off topic, but it's the same thing. Mm-hmm. Is you sent me the video of oh Cam spoke about Colin yeah Cam's gonna be a top three hated wait, person. Wait wait by wait, wait 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 no he's not. Oh yeah he is. But he's up there. It's one of the things where you sent me that video and I watched it and I go he didn't really answer anything. He kind of just danced around everything. He's, a, he's a, the the good players and the good players that executive likes are the politician types mm-hmm. where you don't give an answer. You give something that sounds well, good. It's and look, something that sounds good look, in the media. Yeah. The Patriots are my carbon copy for that. Yeah. Bill Belichick, I don't want like Bill Belichick does not want politics while he's talking X's and O's. Like, Bill, what do you think co- about this? He's like, eh, eh, The Greg yeah. Popovich and Bill Belichick mm-hmm. way of answering is, I don't care. It doesn't pertain to anything. Yeah. That's the best ans- way to answer it. Yeah. And, and and God forbid Colin Kaepernick wants to speak out because you know, he might he was probably thinking he's not going to have a roster spot. Now, now he does. But you know, he, he was more like, I'll make something with, with the situation I have. And you know, he, he did handle it very maturely in his last press conference yeah. where he, he was saying, like, you know, I'll donate a million, the first million dollars that I make but to organizations that help. But the Vikings bring that in the, and all that media circus well, yeah but but i think though is the fact that you know if he still does that i think i think the fact that it's kind of winding down a bit and it's kind of slowing down a he's bit brought because more control to it too yeah, he's, he's brought more matters. control to it and it is it's been more of he's handled it better so i think that if if they were desperate enough and the vikings are i think they might have taken that See, chance but i don't i don't think we're that desperate i don't think we were that desperate to bring in <laughs> sam bradford yeah okay yeah. but sam bradford can come in and and We're not about have Mark Sanchez here. not have that. I would have brought in Mark, if you gave me the choice, Mark Sanchez or Colin Kaepernick. I would have brought in Mark Sanchez. Oh, right. Kaepernick every day of the week. No, I wouldn't because of as of right now the kind of media coverage that's that you bring in and the spotlight on it. You don't want that that's, if you're a head coach. That's fine. And, and okay, let's stick even on the same team. Guess who performed this preseason? Christian Ponder. Another cheap option. I would, know, not, I would not. He knows take the team. Ponder back. Why not? He he's an efficient quarterback who already. It knows the guys on the team. He he's a personality. Is it fit. Re- is it really the same team that he was on? Because it's kind of a different team. It's been a year, but a person. lot of the guys are there still. I'd see with me. I would. That is to me. It's kind of like if we're going that situation. It's kind of like that guy that goes, "Yo, you know what? I'm just missing my girlfriend. I gotta go back to the old." But then you're back with him. You go. Holy shit! I remember why we broke up. You're fucking horrible. Well, how but again, this? he's For not me, compared to compared well, to Teddy Bridgewater. He's not no, no, horrible. No, I'm saying he's the like, same exact. Us together, it's hey, a, you as a person, you may be fine, but us together, we just don't work. How about and this? that's how it would be. How about how about how about you bring in a different uh, former uh, alum of uh, the Vikings <laughs> quarterbacks, Matt Castle. Back up for the the Tennessee Titans right Vikings now. Vikings carousel uh, again. You, you're talking a lot. I wouldn't, about I would have been here. mad with Castle. But you're talking I'd a lot like about Brad for a lot more, even with the injury question. You're talking a lot about a lot about accuracy. Castle doesn't have that injury problem. He is he is older, but still, you you, you, you want him to be accurate. Completed 58 percent of his passes. Fir- that's the first quarterback you brought up that I'm like, okay, fine, I'd be fine what, with that. Like, yeah, you, you you're looking for Bradford again. Bradford is the best option if injuries are turned off. And you get you gave a lot up for him, but then again, if it pays off, it's again high risk, high reward. I think that reward is is going to be hard to find, and and really that reward is really if you make the playoffs, and and that's a lot to ask for from Sad Bradford, who has been injured consistently, hasn't really lived up to that number one pick potential. And if you go with a guy like Matt Hassel or a guy like uh, Mark Sanchez, it's not a sexy option, but you will still get. A guy who can be consistent. You know what you're getting from mm-hmm. Sam Bradford. It's boom or bust. The one thing I'm also thinking, and I'm hoping, I'm kind of hoping, is that now with Sam Bradford kind of maybe thinking, hey, man, this is the best situation I've been in. Let me kind of make the most of it. Where maybe you bring in a Mark Sanchez. Yeah, you know, I've kind of, I've been in a situation. I've been in a good situation when I went to the AFC Championship. 
Sam Bradford's never been in this good of a you know situation. Colin Kaepernick. Yeah, well, Colin Kaepernick is no like he's a guy too that he ain't what he used to be. What? He's not I mean, what he we, used we, to be. I completely he's on disagree. The decline. Less, I less, completely last disagree. Last year he didn't here. have a team around him. Last year that team was terrible. He didn't have a weapon. He didn't have a weapon at all. So I think, and he also hasn't had a, a, a sense of security in that coaching staff. They've flipped out more guys, more offensive coordinators. He's never had the same system. He's always changed. He hasn't had a chance to progress because he hasn't been given that chance. Look, he is extremely athletic. He's talented. He can go out there and throw the ball. He needs to have some sort of support from the ownership, from the coaches. That's all he needs. And, and he, I think he'd be fine. And he's if, not a guy I'd want on this team if I'm trying to. The goal is Super Bowl, so that's what I'll say. Win a Super Bowl. I if I'm saying who would I rather be more confident? Best in, winning chance. If, if if more confident in the ability on the field, I would say Colin Kaepernick over Sam Bradford, just because I know I'm going to get Kaepernick on the field. I, I I just think that's the biggest thing here. It, we we were you were put in this situation because of injuries. Because Teddy and a non character injury, something in during practice, just blew up his knee completely. You're in this because of a guy who blew up his knee. And you bring in a guy who already blew up his knee two years ago, missed a season in 2014 because of it, and was dealing with shoulder injuries in college. And that's re-coming back last year and had him sit out two games. I, it's, it's, there's a lot there. If he stays healthy, Vikings are a playoff team. But that's a lot of ass. Oh, I think that, and this is, I mean... You say it enough, you go say it again if he stays healthy, but it's the the thing the way I see it, am I still confident that we're a top two team in the NFC? No. No. Am I you confident also... that we'll win the division? Maybe, nope. but maybe, but if we win the division, it'll have to be in the same style as last year, coming down to the last week. We're not a for sure winner like I thought we were with Teddy. But I do feel like if we win the division, maybe if we don't, we're a wild card team. I could see us getting to the divisional game at in best case scenario, divisional game at the least. Yeah. I, are we are we going to the Super Bowl? I'll be honest, probably not. I got the Cardinals going to the Super Bowl from the NFC. This is their season. If Carson Palmer can stay healthy. Whoa, so whoa, I, whoa! I thought I thought you weren't allowed to say that phrase. I kiss a death them though, so that's the asterisk. No, there. no, but I mean, the kiss you can't of say death. if he stays healthy. That, that's well, even ragging on that all day. You the, can't say it. The kiss of death is Carson the kiss Palmer's of death, walking man. injury here. Man, he could go down. It's him almost like he has a history, which well, makes you him think and Brady that you know, are on injury watch this year. Former number one overall pick who cannot stay healthy, who really has shown some Weird. potential, but really never been able to hit that. Kind of showed it last year. What if we <laughs> fairly weird similarities between him and Sam Bradford? What if we? See a health like season from Bradford that we saw from Pond or not Ponder from Carson Palmer last what year. What if we see from the year before from Palmer where he got injured in the second game? What if we see that in every other season in Cincinnati? I mean, we have one fluke season, basically. I think he had a couple in, in, in Cincinnati too. I get I get what you say. It is a high risk, high reward season. <laughs> I just don't like I don't get why you have to raise the blood pressure. By worrying about something that may or may not happen. If it happens... Because there's a high likelihood well, of happening. If it happens, it happens. But if it but doesn't then happen... You, then you're then a playoff you're team. Then you're not worrying mm-hmm. about like, Then you're a playoff team. And that's why I'm saying, yeah. why worry about something that may not happen? Okay, but the chances of it happening are like 75 yeah, to 80%. Well, just don't worry about it and play football. <laughs> I'm not worrying about it. No, I'm just trying I'm, to show some reality. I'm not a Vikings fan. I'm, I'm speaking the Vikings fan. Because in week six here, when just Sam Bradford goes it. down with an injury when, after he gets sacked, then I'm going to say, hey, Ricky, remember what I said? If he gets injured, it, it's it's I would I would take the bet that Sam Bradford gets injured. I would take that bet. Ricky, mon- money on this? Are, are you, are you, I'm not going to no, say that I'm he can't I'm go. No, I'm not, not going to say that, that he's going to go 16 games because oh, there's always so a you chance think of there's injury. A chance? Well, there's a chance. I could walk out of the studio today and fucking get injured. I could trip yeah, you, on a rock well, I mean, you don't and need bust to trip up in my you, chin. You could, you could just take a couple steps and drop drop an ACL and MCL and yeah, the whole, I could, whole thing. You pull a you, you could get injured doing anything. Look at And I go back to Teddy Bridgewater. Blew out his knee. Never had a knee injury in his life. Blows out his knee on a non-contact So now you got injury. a guy who's been injured six times in his short, short career, and you're hoping that he I'm gonna, stays healthy long I'm going to put it this way. Playoffs. Maybe it's the Cubs fan in Good me. Good luck. Maybe it's the Cubs when fan in me. When was the last time the Cubs won the World Series? You, fucking shut up and let me finish. Ooh, okay. Um, maybe yeah, it's the so Cubs fan there, in me. I've always said with them, in Theo I trust. Haven't had a complaint about Mike Zimmer since he stepped on board. I'm going to fucking put my trust in Mike Zimmer. This isn't a problem with Mike Zimmer. 
I'm putting Mike Zimmer tru- didn't make this move. I'm putting a trust in that he can Mike work with Zimmer's the guy. not the trainer. Mike Zimmer's not Sam Bradford's left knee. I am <laughs> putting my trust that Mike Zimmer can make this work. I'll put my trust in Mike Zimmer. Yeah. I'm not putting my trust in Sam Bradford's left knee, though. I think this is I'm not be putting good, it in his shoulder. I think we're back to being a playoff team. And, hey, if we win the Super Bowl, that'd be great. But I'm still picking the Cardinals. Anyways, I think what we're getting out of this, Eagles are a winner no matter what. Vikings are a winner. They've and got Sam potential Bradford to win. Eagle, the only way they're a loser is if they dud on the no. draft pick. No, they. Well, well okay, okay yeah. If yeah. they dud on the draft pick, that's the but only way they lose. But you still got value. Lose. You still yeah, got value. No, but that's if the only way they're losing is if they just fucking fuck that draft pick all over and don't draft someone good. I think it's more of even if, if, if I don't even know about that because you got rid of a guy who didn't even want to be in your in your team and wouldn't even be your starter. So I think I think it's I think it's you win you no matter what. You, 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 it's a smart cancer. trade, but you yeah. can, it's a smart trade no matter what. If you look back and you're like, oh, why did they make that trade? It's more of why they pick that guy. But yeah. I still think they win the trade. I think that like Vikings, high risk, high reward. I think it'll work out for us in the end. Eagles, it's clear. You guys are a winner. We didn't have to talk much about you. This is where you guys come in. Let us know down below what you guys think. Vikings fans, Eagle fans, I want to hear from you guys. Vikings fans the most because I'm one of you guys. I want to know what you guys think. How many of you don't like that we gave up the first round pick, even though I'm saying, fuck it, whatever. We can't we can't let this season go by and be a wash. But before I sign things off, Sean, you got one last thing you want to say. Uh, also, in the comments below, tell us what week Sam Bradford would get injured. Hey, we can put predictions on that. I just think that it's going to be... I'm looking for the optimistic week six. season for the Vikings. I want to thank you guys for listening to this special full podcast almost. We went 35 or so minutes on this. Great conversation. Let us know what you think down below. For Ricky, Dave, Sean, the onside kick, have a good day, everybody. Thank you for listening to this MVP podcast. Follow us on Twitter at Most Valuable Pod for more great podcasts.